Human rights organisations in Israel are urging the government and military to comply with a ruling from the International Court of Justice. In January, the ICJ told Israel it should take immediate measures to allow humanitarian assistance into Gaza. That's after South Africa accused Israel of committing genocide against Palestinians. In a letter written by the Associations for Civil Rights in Israel, the group says Israel has failed to change its behaviour since the measures were imposed by the World Court. Well, Philip Marx joins us now from occupied East Jerusalem. Philip, a dozen organisations are accusing Israel of not respecting the ICJ ruling. What sort of impact uh, is that having there? Well, so far, we've not had a response from the Israeli government to this letter. Of course, this is one of the first public instances, Tom, where organizations inside Israel have very publicly called out the Israeli authorities for that failure to comply with those provisional measures ruled on by the ICJ. They are significant in the sense that they are quite specific about what the Israeli government is required to do and also how they're required to report back to the ICJ. Don't forget, politicians here following those rulings were very dismissive of the court. Clearly, though, this is an area where civil society in Israel feels very strongly about this. They're calling on the international community to apply more pressure to Israel in order for authorities here to comply. OK. Thank you so much, uh, Willem. Willem Marks there for us in occupied East Jerusalem. Well, for more on this, uh, we are joined now by Guy Shalov, who is the Executive Director of Physicians for Human Rights Israel. He joins us from Tel Aviv. Thank you very much for your time here on Al Jazeera. Now, your organisation is one of the signatories to condemn Israel's behaviour in Gaza. What specifically have you seen over the last month or so that has prompted you to speak out like this? Um, since the ICJ ruling, we have seen uh, total disregard by the Israeli government of the provisional measures that it ruled uh, that are supposed to be uh, in effect since January 26. In all the different, uh, the four different uh, kind of uh, measures that the, the ICJ uh, decided on, and we see first of all a continuing attack on civilian population with in in, in this. Uh, in this time that passed since the provisional measures were given, uh, we see almost 4,000 uh, Gazans that were killed by Israeli uh, indiscriminate bombings. Um, we we see an attack on medical facilities. The biggest uh, hospital in Gaza that was left after all practically all the healthcare system in Gaza was uh, disrupted by Israel was Nasser Hospital that was also attacked during this uh, month and a half since the provisional measures were given. We're given so, although uh, the ICJ instructed Israel to uh, stop its actions against humanitarian and medical aid, we see direct attack on on these uh, facilities and infrastructure. Um, there, in, in terms of other uh, aspects of the provisional measures, for example, Israel was supposed to stop or, and punish for mm. incitement for genocide inside Israeli population, Israeli society. We are an organization that is based in Tel Aviv, in Israel. We read and watch the news in Hebrew. This hasn't happened. Uh, two days after the provisional measures were given, there was a big conference in Jerusalem with no less than 11 ministers that participated in that mm. conference. Uh, and that conference was uh, uh, argued that Israel should resettle Jewish settlers in Gaza. And we've seen no reaction yeah. by the government whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, yes. We, we could spend the, the next hour listing the atrocities that have been carried out in Gaza, but what sort of response have you actually had uh, from Israeli officials? We have none, unfortunately. We also uh, we are sending letters and we're uh, preparing maybe a petition to the High Court to, uh, uh, to force the Israeli government and the Israeli military to, uh, mm. to change its policy towards the civilians in Gaza and to allow humanitarian aid. It is important to say that it's not uh, just, uh, you know, a kind of a human uh, thing to do for Israel. It's its obligation according to international humanitarian law as the occupying power of, Gaza, of the Gaza Strip. Mm. They must provide for the Gazans. It's not their kind of good, good faith or something. Yeah. And as the, your reporter just reported, there are seven crossings uh, from Gaza into Israel and they are all closed. So it's Israel's obligation to open every crossing that's possible and let humanitarian aid in.
Yeah. As we have seen time and again since the beginning of this war, anyone who speaks up in Israel is shouted down extremely loudly. Has that happened to you and, and the other organisations who have uh, tried to highlight these atrocities? Yes, of course. We're getting uh, hate mail and uh, all kinds of attacks on social media and on to our personal emails for speaking out. Uh, but it's also not just that. It's also a kind of regulations and bureaucracy by the Israeli government that really uh, makes our work uh, more difficult. Uh, for example, we are trying to get humanitarian aid into Gaza since October 7, basically, and we have been prevented by all kinds of regulations. Our bank threatened to freeze our account if we continue to try to transfer funds in order to buy medications and get them into Gaza. Uh, so it's a very much an institutional effort to not allow any uh, kind of support from uh, Israelis who would like to support and and, uh, and help the Gazans in their conditions now. OK, thank you so much. We'll have to leave it there, but we really do appreciate uh, your time. That's Guy Shalev there for us.